Good morning. Welcome to Christ Lutheran Church this morning. So happy you had the opportunity to worship with us today. Our focus, well, take the time uh, uh, before service to fill out the friendship cards in, in, the, in the pews ahead of you. And then at the time of the offering, you go ahead and pop them, pop them in the uh, offering plate at that point. Um, our focus for today is the first will be last and the last will be first. It comes from the, the gospel lesson where Jesus re reminds us and we rejoice in the fact that though the, though the door is narrow to heaven, through Jesus, he, he welcomes us into, into heavenly paradise. So that'll be our focus for today. A couple of notes we have. Two new hymns today from the new hymnal and a new psalm as well. The first hymn is an old familiar tune, so we should be good with that too. And also the closing hymn, the choir introduced last year, so I think we'd be okay with that hymn as well. But the psalm, psalm for today, we'll have a soloist introduce the psalm, the congregation to join in the refrain and the glory be to the Father. Um, so we begin with hymn 621, Praise my soul, the King of heaven. Let's worship the Lord. Continue on page uh, two. Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father. I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for all of our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, 
I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. For all that we need in life and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. For the well-being of your holy church and all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of faith, hope, and love, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Our first lesson this morning, taken from Isaiah chapter 66. And I, because of what they have planned and done, am about to come and gather the people of all nations and languages, and they will come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them, and I will send some of those who survived to the nations, to Tarshish, to the Libyans and Lydians, famous as archers, to Tubal and Greece, and to the distant islands that have not heard of my fame or seen my glory. They will proclaim my glory among the nations, and they will bring all your people from all the nations to my holy mountain in Jerusalem as an offering to the Lord, on horses, in chariots and wagons, and on mules and camels, says the Lord. They will bring them, as the Israelites bring their grain offerings, to the temple of the Lord in ceremonially clean vessels. And I will select some of them also to be priests and Levites, says the Lord. As the new heavens and the new earth I will, that I will make will endure before me, declares the Lord. So will your name and descendants endure. From one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, all mankind will come and bow down before me, says the Lord. And they will go out. And look on the dead bodies of those who rebelled against me. The worms that eat them will not die. The fire that burns them will not be quenched. And they will be loathsome to all mankind. This is the word of our God. Again, our psalm of the day is Psalm 103a. 
Mr. Sauer will sing the uh, refrain and the verses. The congregation is invited to sing the, the refrain and the glory be to the Father. Satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is kind merciful, slow to anger, and rich in compassion. Our second lesson from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 18 to 24. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched, and that is burning with fire, to darkness, gloom, and storm, to a trumpet blast, or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further word be spoken to them, because they could not bear what was commanded. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear, but you have come to Mount Zion to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. This is the word of our God. We sing the verse of the day together.
Stand for the gospel lesson. Our gospel lesson for today is taken from Luke chapter 13, verses 22 to 30. This also serves as our sermon text. Then Jesus went through the towns and villages, teaching as he made his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? He said to them, make every effort to enter through the narrow door. Because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you will say, We ate and drank with you, and you taught in our streets. But he will reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Away from me, all you evildoers. There will be weeping there and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrown out. People will come from east and west and north and south and will take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. Indeed, there are those who are last who will be first and first who will be last. This is the gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated. This time we invite the children to come forward for a children's message. Good morning, everyone. Great to see you all this morning. Anybody like going on road trips with your family? It's kind of fun, huh? Yeah. As you're driving, maybe everybody, anybody have a mom or a dad that as you're on a road trip, the mom or the dad who's ever driving always thinks they can find a shortcut? Me. Yeah, I like to do that too. There's got to be a, there's got to be a shorter way, right? How's that turn out usually for you? Is it usually a shortcut? Oh, it is. Well, good. That's good. All of my shortcuts usually aren't shortcuts. End up on longer roads and windy roads. Ends up taking probably a little bit longer. Always looking for a shortcut, though. And sometimes I even have to say to myself, you know, that was my mistake. I have to go on my phone and find out a different way to get there. But eventually I'll get there, right? Eventually I'll get there. Because we have this amazing thing in our pockets that will tell us how to get to places, right? Google will tell us how to get to places. Well, Jesus talks about in our sermon text for today, I want you to listen closely, this narrow door, right? This gate of heaven. He says it's a narrow door. And so many people try to find it. They try to find all these different shortcuts. Well, guess what? Those shortcuts, all those other routes that isn't Jesus, they all lead to dead ends. They all lead to not heaven. They all lead the opposite way. So we want to stay away from those things, right? And just like I have a phone that tells me how to get to different places, we have something far better and far more reliable than that when we go to heaven, don't we? Okay, yeah, that's yeah. the iPad will tell you different places too. But on your iPad too, not just directions, you can also have a Bible app. And on that Bible app or in your Bibles, they give you exactly the way to heaven, right? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And because of the faith that he worked in your heart by the power of that word then, he takes you right through that narrow door, right through the gate of heaven. To a place where there is no sin, where there's no suffering, sickness, or sadness, or death ever again. And that's what he has in store for us, this amazing feast. That's what we all have, not because we deserve it, but because Jesus won that for each and every single one of you. Let's pray about that. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you so much for bringing all the children of faith through the power of your word. Please continue to be with us, strengthen us, that we always keep our eyes focused on you and the, and the, and the joy that you want for us in heaven. In your name we pray. Amen. We'll continue with the hymn of the day, hymn 395, Seek Where You May to Find a Way.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon text for consideration is taken from the Gospel lesson in Luke chapter 13. If you'd like to follow along, allow me to reread verse 24. Make every effort to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. This is the word of our God. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, are you a good driver or a bad driver? I think most of us, if you're like me, think we're a pretty good driver. I suppose I probably shouldn't ask you, though. You probably ask your spouse or whoever rides with you, your kids, if you're a good driver or not. Since I moved to Minneapolis, it seems like there's lots of terrible drivers around. People that are zigging and zagging around cars, getting as close as possible to bumpers as they possibly can get to the person in front of them, all while looking at a phone, whatever they're doing on their phone while they're doing that. It's no wonder that there's so many accidents along, along the freeways. What makes a bad driver even worse than is sometimes road construction. And there's road construction, it seems like, everywhere. And when you, when you see that sign, road construction right ahead, left lane closed in two miles, every one of us that drives has to make a decision. Do I, A, wait patiently in that middle lane and watch all those people fly by me in the left lane? Or do I, B, get in the left lane and just go and try to cut someone off? Sometimes, for me, I have to admit, I jump in that left lane if I want to get some places. And if you jump in that left lane, if you've ever, ever done that, you know that you're always looking for some kind of an opening to get back over. At some point, before that two miles is up, you have to be in that other lane. So you're driving along, and it's, the sign changes to one mile left, and you see kind of a bigger opening in front of a semi-driver. There's always an opening there, but you also see that that lane isn't moving, so you kind of want to go a little bit farther. So you pass that opening, and as you keep going farther and farther down the road, the openings get narrower and narrower and narrower, and people are staring at you and looking at you, and you keep going, and the sign says, half mile, and the opening is narrower. And then all of a sudden it says, 200 feet, left lane closed, and you see these orange construction barrels. And by the grace of God, God puts a minivan right next to you. And there's always a narrow space right in front of any minivan. I drive a minivan. I get cut off all the time. So. But uh, there's always an empty space you can get in there. Just barely squeaking in through that narrow door, and you kind of go on, go on your very merry way. In our lesson, Jesus talks about making every effort to strive to go through this narrow door, to make every effort that you possibly can to get through this narrow door in the proper way, and also not to wait too long. Now, Jesus is teaching this lesson as he's on his way down to Jerusalem to die. It follows up on last week's sermon. He's going to Jerusalem. He is resolutely going to Jerusalem to die on the cross for the sins of the entire world. To suffer the full wrath of God that I deserve for my sins, that you deserve for your sins. He's going there. But on the way, he's stopping at cities and villages, and he's teaching, and he's preaching. As he's preaching in this lesson, a man asks a pretty good question. He says this. Verse 23, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? It's a fair question. Get a question like that a lot. Pastor, what about all those billions of people all over the world that don't know Jesus? Are only a few people going to be saved? It's a very good, good question. Talk about that answer later on at the end of the sermon. But Jesus points it back at him. He says, let's talk about you for a moment. Are you going to be saved? Are you going to make it through that narrow door? Or are you in that left lane driving, looking at your phone, and about to run into some barrels and crash? Are you going to be saved? And then Jesus says this, verse 24. Make every effort to enter through the narrow door, because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able to. The key to salvation is through that narrow door, Jesus says. The key to salvation is through that narrow door, that, that, that gate to heaven. It says, make every effort, strive to enter through that narrow, narrow door. Train like an athlete training for a competition to go through that narrow door. Fight for that. Now, we all know that we don't earn salvation by what we do. But you can lose it. If you're not striving to know Jesus, you can lose it. If you're not striving to be in contact with the word of God, you can lose that. If you start taking all these detours and veer away from him. So he says the door is narrow. The longer you wait and the least that you strive, the door gets narrower and narrower. He says again, 
make every effort to enter through the narrow door because many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not make it. Many will try. They'll try to enter by their good works, but they won't make it. They'll try to enter by their good, by their good looks or by how they look to the world around them, but they will not make it. They'll try to enter by their membership in this church or that church, but they will not make it. Jesus is the only way. He is the narrow door. He is the way, the truth, and life. All other roads lead to dead ends. All other roads lead to a bunch of orange barrels and, and car crashes. Jesus is the only way. Now, the people in, in Jesus' day that were not going to make it, they were the Pharisees. They thought that they had lived a pretty good life. They thought that by their own man-made rules, that they had done enough to earn salvation, that they were entitled to, this, to get through this narrow door because they were so great compared to everybody else around them. We all have an inner Pharisee inside all, every single one of us. We know exactly what that's like. And today we have two different groups of people, I think, really. People that are either totally spiritual and not religious, so it's all about feeling and how you feel. If it feels good, it must be right and all that kind of stuff that's going on. Any path that isn't connected with the word of God is a wrong path. It's a path that leads to the weeping and gnashing of teeth that Jesus talks about in a few moments. Any path that isn't connected to Christ and his word is leading down the path of damnation. Then also we, have, we can fall into the other camp. We're just like the Pharisees. We do all these outward things, say all the right things, dress nice, look nice. Everybody else around us talks about how, how nice we are. But if we're just like the Pharisees, whitewashed tombs inside, we're on a wrong path. All in that same boat. The path that leads to the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. How do you avoid those ditches? How do you avoid those things? Why do they fall into those things? It really comes down to, I think, just laziness, spiritual laziness. Not making the time to stay connected to God's word. Not making the time to study the scriptures. Letting the devil use any excuse. Letting the world use any excuse they can to keep you away from gathering together around God's word and sacraments. Where we know he actually works and strengthens faith. And shows us Jesus. Don't let the devil convince you that there's other things you should be doing. Stay connected to him. Jesus is the narrow door. Thankfully, Jesus sees me and he sees all of us in that left lane that's about to close or about to crash. And he grabs the wheel and he rescues us, doesn't he? He rescues us from my spiritual laziness. He rescues me from, from not prioritizing him all the time. He rescues us and forgives you for all those sins. Notice he says this as he's on his way to a cross to die for all your sins and mine. I am the way, he says, the truth and the life. Jesus is that narrow door. Everything we do at our church focuses on Jesus as our Savior from sin. Let's rejoice that by the power of the Holy Spirit working in your hearts through the gospel, he welcomes you through that narrow door. Through faith, then, that door is wide open for the whole world. But eventually it'll be closed. That's, I guess, the difference when you're driving in road construction. You know if you're in that left lane exactly when that, road's gonna, when that lane's going to close. We have no idea when God's going to close that door to heaven. Listen to what he says next. Verse 25. Once the owner of the house gets up and closes the door, you will stand outside knocking and pleading, Sir, open the door for us. But he'll answer, I don't know you or where you come from. Then you'll say, We ate and we drank with you, and you taught in our, and you taught in our streets. But he'll reply, I don't know you or where you come from. Away from me, you evildoers. There will be no warning. At the, at the time that God chooses, the door will close. There are no mulligans. There are no second chances. There are no redos. There are no takebacks, right? This is it. Once it's closed, it's closed. People say, but Lord, I, I've been to church like once or twice a couple of times. I heard a sermon or two. He said, away from me, you evildoer. Away from me. The stench of your sin is still on you because you rejected the gift that Jesus has won for you. Away from me, you evildoers. That sin is still covered all over you because you rejected the free and full forgiveness that Jesus offered in his cross. Away from me, you evildoers. There's a saying that goes, uh, once one door closes, another door opens. 
I guess you can kind of apply it to this lesson too. Only in this lesson, the other door isn't very pleasant, is it? Jesus describes the other door as eternal suffering. He describes hell as a place where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth, where it's not annihilation, right, but eternal suffering, eternal torment, a place where there is no, no peace from God, right? Eternal suffering, that's the other door. That's the wider door that so many go through. And then Jesus talks about, he answers that man's question. He doesn't tell us how many people, right? But he tells us where the people come from. People from all nations, from the four corners of the earth, regardless of age, race, social status, gender, people from all four corners of the earth, anybody who hears this amazing gospel message that Jesus is the savior of the world is welcomed through that narrow door. People from all over the world is welcomed through by the blood of Christ and they're welcomed and they're seated at that feast in the kingdom of God. So I guess go back to that question at the beginning. Are you going to be there? Are you sure you'll be at that feast in the kingdom of God? And the answer is, for all of you, absolutely. Because it has nothing to do with what you do Nothing to do with you at all. It's, your salvation is completely wrapped up in Jesus. And his perfect work that he's done for you. He lived a perfect life in your shoes. Died an instant death to cover you and to wash away all your sins and covered you with his righteousness. There, there's a reason that everything we do as you walk through those glass doors points to Jesus. As your savior from sin. Everything we do reminds you of that cross of Christ where he took the full wrath of God for us. So you always know when you leave. That heaven is your home. That you have salvation. It's not about us. What Jesus has done for us. Every time you see the baptismal font, it's a reminder that you have an inheritance in heaven that will never perish, spoil, or fade that's kept just for you. It's yours. Holy Spirit gives it to you through water and the word and baptism. We receive the sacrament where he gives us this remarkable gift. In, with, and under the bread and wine, he gives us himself, his true body and blood for the forgiveness of all of our sins. To assure us, to give us the confidence to know that because of Jesus, we are welcomed through that narrow door. So empowered by the Holy Spirit who worked that faith in our hearts by the gospel message. Let's make every effort to strive to go through that narrow door. Let's make every effort possible to stay connected to his word, to gather together, to worship together, to encourage one another, to strengthen each other as we point one another to Jesus who leads us through the narrow door. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God which transcends all understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll continue on page 10 with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the offering. This time, please also put the friendship cards in the offering plates as well.
Please stand for prayer. O Lord God, we thank you for the wondrous gift of Jesus Christ, your Son, and for the promised graces we have received through him. We thank you that through his perfect life and his obedience to death on the cross, we have been granted cleansing and pardon for all of our sins. We thank you that in his resurrection we have the promise of life everlasting, and that in his ascension to the right hand of your majesty, we have the assurance that he continually intercedes for us. Help us believe and trust in him, love and serve him, that in all our thoughts, words, and actions, we may manifest his spirit. Rebuke our selfishness and subdue our self-indulgence. Deepen our sympathies, strengthen our hope, and confirm us in our faith. Dwell in our homes, O Lord, and let the trust of our families be centered in you alone, so that no difficulty, trial, or adversity rob us of the conviction that you are our helper in every time of need. Relieve the afflictions of the weary and the sick, and dry the tears of the troubled and sorrowful. Lead them to look to you as the unfailing spring of healing and hope. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior, who also taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. We also have a special prayer of thanksgiving for the Williamson family. Spencer and uh, Kelsey have their baby boy, Lucas Daniel Williamson. Both mother and baby are healthy, so we rejoice over that. Let's pray. Lord of life, we marvel again at the wonderful way in which you bring children into the world. Accept our thanks for holding your protecting hand over this mother and childbirth and for bringing joy to these parents with the gift of a child. Bless this child, receive him into your family through the sacrament of baptism, and protect him from every danger of body and soul. Give his parents the love, wisdom, and means to care for this child you have entrusted to them. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the friend of children. Amen. We'll continue on page 11 with the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He sends the Holy Spirit to testify that we are his children and to strengthen us when we are weak. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way after the supper, took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now those members of the congregation who have prepared their hearts and minds, please come forward for all things are ready. Congregation, may be seated. We'll continue on page 15 with the Thanksgiving. Please stand. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the closing hymn, 10,000 Reasons.